Well, good morning, guys. Uh, Pastor Steve here. Just wanted to share a brief meditation with you. Today I've been meditating in the book of Hebrews um, in chapter 10 and wanted to read a couple verses for you. Specifically, wanted to read verse 24 and 25. The scripture says, And let us be concerned about one another in order to promote love and good works, not staying away from our worship meetings as some habitually do, but encouraging each other and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Um, now the immediate context here, the Lord is saying that we should enter um, the God's sanctuary boldly because of the uh, through the blood of Jesus, um, and He's opened this uh, new way for us through um, His flesh, um, and uh, we are to draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, um, and we're to hold fast the confession of our hope um, because the One who promised is faithful. And so in that context of all that Christ has done for us, he says we are to be concerned about, about each other to promote love and good works. God knows that in all that he's done for us and the incredible, unbelievable nature of the Messiah's sacrifice, as wonderful as that is, we still need encouragement from each other. And so he says we are to be concerned about each other and we are supposed to promote these, these acts of love and good works. Um, so we're to, we're to be walking together in discipleship, encouraging each other towards imitating what the Messiah has done for us, what he's demonstrated, how he lived, how he treated others, uh, how he has loved me and you. Uh, we're to be encouraging each other um, towards imitating those acts of love um, and good works towards those around us. Um, and so God knows we need this encouragement, and as we're giving that encouragement and needing that encouragement, he continues by saying to, that we don't forsake um, gathering together for worship. Um, we need the time of encouraging each other before the Lord. We also need to have time together of worshiping the Lord. Worshiping God together is one of the ways that we um, are reminded of all that he has done for us. And that reminder strengthens our resolve to do and continue in the love and good works that he has called us to do. Now that time together in worship, um, that should include the reading of scripture, it should include prayer, it should include fellowship, it should include singing. Um, all forms of that focus our heart and attention on the Lord. And the truth of the matter is we need those. We need that time. And God, who knows that we need it, said do not forsake it as some people habitually do. Some people in their own pride say, I don't need encouragement from other people. I'm fine. I don't need the people around me helping me or encouraging me. Or I'm good. I'm doing fine by myself. And um, God saying that, no, we really need to walk together in this. And that's a critical part of discipleship. God hasn't called us to be the, the, the lone soldier out doing his work. We're to go together. We're to work, we're to work as his body. And uh, while we do some things individually, we, we work together collectively. And so this gathering of worship is important. Now, the gathering of worship is not required on Sunday mornings in a building. The early church gathered and they worshipped around the word in houses. Um, they followed the pattern of the synagogues. I don't even believe there was singing in the, in the worship gatherings, at least not for the first couple, uh, first couple centuries. Um, and so the, uh, um, it's, it's not about that you have to be together singing. It's not that you have to be together in a church building, um, but God has called us to be concerned about each other, to promote love and good works, and in that process, we need to be gathering together for the purpose of worshiping God. God has created us with a need to worship, and if we are not worshiping Him, we will worship something else. And uh, sad to say, the government 
and those in power are thrilled when you worship them. They're thrilled when you grant them the power of control over your life. Um, and uh, God has called us to worship him and um, not anything else. So I want to quickly caveat that, that worship will look a little bit different um, for people in different circumstances. Uh, and I don't think that anybody should be looked down upon um, when their circumstances are outside of their control. Uh, but those who have a choice um, and are able to do so need to be honoring the Lord um, and being wise, being careful as they need to be um, in recognition of the situation that God has put them in, um, not being foolish or arrogant, um, but submitting to God's command we need to be gathering as best as we know how to worship. Um, and so I hope that you take this in the spirit that I am sharing it, and I believe the spirit in which God is giving it, and, um, and not, not focus on the Sunday church service as the end-all and be-all of this command. As a matter of fact, um, the Sunday service didn't exist when this command was given. Um, at least not in any way, shape, or form like we know it. <laughs> but um, the, uh, the command has to do with our need to be together in worshiping God. So um, however you're able to do that in the context in which God has placed you, I hope that you are willing to respond to God's command um, because God knows what we need. And God has called us to honor him in obedience and to gather together for worship and to be encouraging each other towards love and good works. Well, I know this has been an encouragement and challenge for me today. I hope it is for you as well. Um, I hope you have a great day in the Lord, and God bless you. Go in peace.